We got a question. Uh, Mr. Chris Hoke sent you an email today. Okay. Can I'm you... probably going to look to see it. Okay. Uh, if that's all we're asking. I Since this is your house phone, I sent you a text on it, and it didn't work. So we were trying to figure you out, find you. And uh, if you will check your email, we are doing a little four-minute film project for a contest out in L.A., and would love to have you and Chris, and we'll probably do it the week of October the 5th. It'll only take one day. Okay. If you think you're available for that. I should be. I've got, uh, let's see, the 5th is Monday. Yes, sir. I've got some things to do on Monday, but. Uh, That's all right. We'll work around your schedule. We'll work around your schedule, but if you'll check your email and send it to uh, just reply to uh, Hoke. It comes to me and Hoke. If you're okay. good with it at, and read it, because it's in there. Is it in there, Hoke? Okay. Yeah, I, I put the script there. I said the and Jack the, Bar or something or other. It yeah. needs to be quiet, huh? Yeah, it's in there too, buddy. So just let us know, but we'd love to have you. Okay, hey, thank you. I'll, ask I'll him, check it right quick. Ask him if it's... Mm-hmm. You bet. Bye-bye. All right, buddy. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. I was going to make sure the email was right, but all right. It ought to be. I went to my old Red Sea email. Here's the deal. He'll call us back if it ain't, but we got a hold of him. So Was that his house phone? You're, that was house phone. That's why the damn text didn't go. Yeah, I remember when I called him for it, and it stood out because when I called him, I no, never got it because right. he's like the only some bitch I've called in the last 10 years that was at a house phone. I know, and that I swear to you, I knew it. I absolutely knew it, and I – Got it. I sent him a text. So anyway, uh, if if right. people are watching, that's how we uh, that's how we get our actors. We track them down at eight. I mean, I early in the morning. As soon as he started talking, like I didn't record this. This might be oh. hard. Oh, yeah. We'll just, start, on podcast. we'll just start it with air. So basically, did we talk about this last week? We did talk about this last week. About we talked about the four minutes. Field? It's a contest. Uh, we're just adding it to the front of Roy, which will, the name will end up changing. And what it is is it is a pitch concept, and it's going through Filmright and an L.A. producer. And they are looking for a concept they can work with to turn into a movie. Now, we're still going to shoot it with this because it's not about – what you shoot it with. It's about how good the story is. And this thing's going to look good with the lens and I'm not worried about that. Right. But, uh, it, after I wrote the action and sent it to you in my head, I did not think you would, after we talked would make Jack as cool as you did. Does that make sense? You didn't think Kinda? I would, would you would, what do you think I was going to do? Uh, I saw him as – I got what you were talking about as being the pops, as kind of like uh, since we're both raised in the church, uh, let me tell you something. What you're doing is I love you, son, but what you're doing is wrong, and it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. And I didn't want it to be the – typical that's what it is yeah. and you didn't do it as a typical so i really enjoyed the well, the way I, you made him what i what i thought was you know usually <clears throat> you have a main character you know a really you know billy badass main character and you 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 think about what their parents might be like and most movies you never see that so like well I, I don't know if Pops is his dad, real dad, or if he's just a father figure. I'm not really sure. My mind we don't is, know. My mind is just a father figure, but right. I figure, well, I'll just make him real, almost like Yoda. There, you know, do or do not, there is no try. So when he talks, Roy starts to talk. It's like, hey, you need to be more decisive in your words. You need to be plain and decisive, and just kind of took that approach. Dude, I. It was absolutely. It was absolutely perfect, and like I said, I immediately when I read the first. And remember that I hope, I hope these people remember it's our first concept contest is four minutes long. So each short after that is not that long, but we have four minutes to explain to you or the or the 
in the contest, you need to know what this movie is going to be a, be about. Ours is a series, but if it ha- if we happen to win, we would turn into a movie. Right. But you have to understand what this is about. And I really believe in the four minutes, you absolutely know. And it's because of Pops, not Roy. Roy, to me, is every other John Wick, yeah, whatever, Tom Cruise. But he's that same guy, but Pops makes him okay, now I want to know what's going to happen to him. Yeah, yeah. He's he's like the humanity or whatever. Yeah. So kudos to that. Good job. I was really well, excited is, to read that. That's what's kind of interesting about these, um, all these ideas with uh, the Roy thing. But I don't know if it'll end up being called Roy or what we'll end up calling it. If we call it Roy for now. Yeah. Screwed ain't too bad. I don't you know. No, I like Screw too. You know, because it's almost like you said with the cowboy, like the the multi universe. Roy can be screwed here, <laughs> f tier, damned yeah. here. You know, that's one of the things I wish we'd had that we or wish we that would, but wish we could get the time and and money to to do a cowboy lucky multiverse. Oh, so I'd figure out so a way good. to how to make wounded. It'd be so good, and all the others like I'd figure out a way to make them come over. You know. Well, you well, could. We, we, we really already could. talked about that. We you could for sure. We funny as if all three Roy's showed up in one scene together. So you had the Amador, <laughs> Chris, and Rusty. <laughs> all three Roy's show up at the same scene. <laughs> have, to, have to work together. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. Uh, I will say, man, I, I really, I really am glad we we found this to do this because it it literally sets we were going to use the it literally sets the whole even if we don't if nothing happens and nothing happens for us that first four minutes will set the tone of our series yeah well that's what i was going to say is, is what's really interesting to me is about these is they're fun is like the, the, you write the action and i kind of just make a dialogue scene or i kind of make it more into a story right and no i don't have a hundred pages to do that i've got like three so That's you gotta have yeah. your dialogue or whatever you're trying to do is gotta be pretty creative real quick, which is what I've been trying to do. Is I make I try and make it as quirky as possible. So it'll stand out that and you just, still understand yeah. Yeah. And that was my deal to be able to give you enough time to give words to where I had this sequence longer and had to go, I only have I need to if I have a minute if we have four minutes. I have to have less than two minutes to give you two minutes because if not, my action's not going to stand on its own for you to go. Oh, great. What happened? You know, you need to be told what what's happening. And you did that. I think there's only one so far. I still got like three to clean up, I think, but there's only one so far. I didn't really change yours. I added one line to make it. Uh, I think that was five. Yeah. But like you had a big old elaborate chase and everything. I was like, well, let me just leave all that alone. He can make the bulk of this action. Yeah, I had but the car I, chase. I had one line. I think you need to, I had to change one line. Chris says something. He had to I'd change what he said so he'd make it fit with all the other 10. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. And it was just, if I knew he said this, then it makes it all work. Well, I know we're so, like, I've rented and I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, I was going to watch it on the plane when I went out to Phoenix last week, but I rented the tax collector and it's still on my phone. So I haven't watched it. I've heard, uh, I've heard good and bad about do, it. Do people know what we're talking about and why we're talking about, uh, talk about that. Yeah, sure. We can, man. We got, let me tell them. Yeah. Well, I'll tell them it, it kind of started with me. So I got a buddy that acts overseas Yep. Um, um, he uh, does a lot of like theater and different projects like that, like in Hong Kong and Singapore. Somehow, through a f- so he knows the girl that's in the tax collector, and she said that they were looking for some completion funds. That word got back to him. He contacted me to see if we could help him get money. Then I called you and Chris and said, "Hey, they're they're looking for money. The Shia LaBeouf film. They need a X Y Z to get it finished." what do you think? And then he sent the script and I read the script and you take it from there. Yeah. 
So we got the script. Well, we talked to the two, I would say they're producers, but I think they're money people uh, looking for money. Yeah. And we ended up getting, it ended up working out for us the whole way, but we had to have, they were looking for seven production companies to offer a million dollars. And it was David Ayers. So if anybody knows David Ayers, just look up, I mean, Suicide Squad, Fury, yeah. uh, shit. I mean, Sabotage with Arnold, but, so he was looking to raise well, that. That's right. He didn't and, do that. I forgot about that. And uh, evidently he did because he got it done. And we had gotten the script. We got photos. And it was Shia LaBeouf and the tax collector. And, of course, we didn't have a million dollars. We probably should have wrote a blank check just to, you know. But we didn't. So, once again, it's almost that. Look how close we were. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. And it turned out getting done. And now that uh, it's out, I'm anxious to watch it. But I've heard reviews of, man, it's pretty good. And, and, and I've heard reviews of, like, eh, it's all right. Well, I think I it, don't know. because of COVID, it tanked like like so much else did. I mean, even Tenet is struggling. The only reason Tenet's making money because of overseas. It's just because there's it, we can't get to the theater. And even though it might be bad or be good, if you would have went and saw it in a the theater, I would have went and saw it in a the theater. Because yeah. you would have said you need to go watch this, you know. Same as same as tax collector. Forget this on that line. Friday they or yeah, Friday they released the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. They put back deer, so we went. So I went and saw my second movie since COVID. Hit. Right, and it was pretty decent. There's probably more people in that than I saw Tenet with. And uh, 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 I got. I think it was sometime Saturday. I was just like, I always go through my websites. I always go by box office mojo empire strikes back 40 year old movie led the box office for Friday. <laughs> no doubt. I didn't check the weekend <laughs> yet, but Friday it won Friday. But I, was like, oh, wow. I could see it. I could see all the people our age going to see it. That's a, I mean, that's a weird, we're in a weird place with COVID and movies. No, no, for weird. sure. Dude. And my deal uh, is, whole- I don't even know what the Oscars do because there's a lot of movies not going to get pushed and not get released. So yeah, it should be in the Oscars. I agree. I mean, uh, you could, you could have so few movies that are worthy of Oscars that like Will Smith for bad boys, three wins or something. Cause there's nothing else to put up there. Dude, you need to, they need to make sure they don't let them give speeches this time. <laughs> you, you just get to get your Oscar and leave. Oh, yeah. It'll be a zoom meeting. So it won't matter. <laughs> the Oscars be a zoom. <laughs> If the Oscars were today, you'd probably have to give it all the tenant because it's like the only big movie that could come That's out. That's the only one that came out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So before we get too far into it, yesterday your Titans are three and oh. Yes, by that. By six points. Are you or five? Are points. you are you seeing a possibility? I do believe they're in the playoffs. I do yeah. believe they go deep in the playoffs. Yeah, I think we win and I, I know we're leaving out of I know we're leaving out of our deal, but just real quick, you feeling good? Because usually by this time, your that your beard would probably be pulled out. So in the third week, so the reason I feel good, I, I don't feel good about the games because we eat them out, and I mean we let Jacksonville run all over us, right? And in Miami, the week after, you know, stomps uh, uh, Jacksonville. Uh, so. Uh, I don't feel good about our, our wins. I mean, I don't feel good about the game, but I feel good about being 3-0 because we got so many people out injured that are going to come back. They're not on IR for the season. They're, they're going to come. So right. As we get healthier and we get these wins, eat by yeah. wins, then we'll just start winning outright. I thought I, – I said before the season on the Incredible Hope Show, I thought we were a 12-win uh, team. You know, I thought I, we were going to be like 12 after, after watching it. I will say that I do believe Tannehill is your future. He doesn't make the mistakes. He had a few, but he doesn't make the mistakes. Yeah, he, if yeah. the defense gets back to where it was last year, it's gonna be, it's gonna be tough. Y'all he's, gonna be tough. He's solid. He, he like I, I don't know what to compare him to, but he's just he's just solid. He makes the throws. Doesn't make a whole lot of bad decisions. The my biggest fear is uh, uh, at some point they're gonna run Henry into the dirt. Dude, they just need to stay up. With Corey Davis coming around playing good and the tight end, yeah. if they can just play action that, they need to get – I'm telling you, they need to get – and you might have one, I don't know. They need to get them one more back. 
They need to get them a Gerard or whatever from the Bengals, a scat back that they can throw yeah. them screens to and not throw it to him because he's yeah, just they, so – he's so big. They picked up a running back in the third round they like a lot. I think he's a third rounder. They like him a lot. He just got injured. He, he, he played his first snaps this week. So, he could – he's a rookie, so he could come along and beat Help him. out a little bit. Could, but – Anyway, but no, I, I I feel good about it. I mean, honestly, I thought they're going to lose. I thought they're going to lose before because you know you go on the road against a non divisional opponent. Go I thought it after after Rudolph makes that catch. I'm like, oh, here they go. Yeah, but good job, Cowboys. Cowboys lost. So I know. So the Cowboys losing, being one and two doesn't shock me. That to me is not the story. I think yeah. they even probably figured out and they end up being some kind of wild card or something. I, I could see yeah, that. Yeah, it's just they should have won that game. But to me, the story is with Dak and all these numbers, does he get that payday? Does absolutely. He make that payday? Absolutely. From the Cowboys. He'll get it somewhere. Uh, absolutely. He'll get it from the Cowboys. You think? Absolutely. He, I promise you, after watching his, if you watch the Graham Bethard show, you know, you've seen him. Uh, he does a talk show on the internet. He talks to everybody, whatever yeah. his name's Graham something. Dude, he made a great statement. He lives off his endorsements. He, I, I, everything that's built at my house is off my endorsements. Football is football is football is football. He'll get paid. He'll get paid. I think Jerry went, hey, listen, this is what we need to do this year. Will you do it? I mean, you got to think he's getting, what, 27 something or something like that. Up front, like Cousins did, two yeah. years in a row. Two years in a row, he was guaranteed. He made $42 million, Cousins did, in two years and signs this deal. So, absolutely. I think you're absolutely fine. He's going to get paid. Oh, speaking of so people how this is done in real time, I just got, I think I got a reply from Jack on an email. Okay. His response make sure I don't read anything nasty, which I doubt. Not from Jack, you won't. Be happy to participate. Uh, I don't want to read this part. I think I can be useful. I'll be out of town until Wednesday afternoon. So if you want to get there to rehearse, I'll be available next weekend. I'll tell you the part I didn't want to read later. Okay. So he's in. Perfect. All right. Done. We'll have it done. So we'll get that. That's how it happens. We we can go back and watch it. Okay. He's going to watch further. He confirmed to start with this. Yeah, I'm going to watch that. Uh, but, so, good. Jack's in. Chris is in. We talked to him today. We ain't really been telling Chris what's going on, so we just need him to show up and be, be uh, Roy. So we don't well, he don't tell us it. what's going on. So it's kind of no. Weird. Yeah. You just act, dude. Just show up and just act. Yeah, I couldn't tell you half the time. Two things that I really like that I see it, and I'm going to make sure I get it done is, is slow down. In the script, you guys will see it, but I'm going to say it. Slow down. Pop says it. Take a breath. Yeah. He does it. He starts talking. He says, slow down. Breathe through your nose. And I'm going to get that close-up of, like, just calm down. Yeah. Those are things that when you write it, I see it. And usually you would have to be like, hey, make sure you get this shot because I want to see that. So that's going to be my – Picture your dad talking to you, which I don't know exactly how your dad would talk to you, but I can picture – from what I know about your dad, I can picture you going, hey, take a breath, calm down, yeah. tell me this story. Because you know how kids are like, ah, this, 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 this. Yeah, that, that is absolutely I can just see your dad going, stop, breathe. Yeah. Now so tell now, me. Tell me what to, that was so <laughs> awesome. Uh, but, hang on, I got to respond to that. So... So super pumped when I read that. So we have to have it turned in by October 23rd. But, of course, next week we'll do another show. And next week we will start our pre-production. And I, I do want to have a couple of reads. I think it would be cool if, if we sat down and listened to Chris and, and mm-hmm. Jack just do it. Yeah, be good. I so, a novel update. I've, I've been writing on yeah, the well, that. day. I figured out what is missing. So what been missing. Huh? Back up with the woman. It's, the, it's the, yeah, it's the woman's story. Okay, but I'm saying I don't want to tell them too much. Okay, go. I don't want to tell them too much, but uh, uh, it's a story I've had in mind for for years. Right. I've had it 
probably 10 years in my mind before I ever met you. So it's probably a 20 something year old idea in my head. And I wrote it. I probably wrote 20,000 words just since, you know, about a year. And I didn't like it. Something was wrong with it. And it hit me. And I've been on a tangent ever since. While I was watching Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, it struck me how funny it was. Even though it's action and, and right. lightsabers and spaceships, it's funny. There's always, every scene has some humor. It's not correct for when Luke and Vader fight at the end and it gets a little more serious. Other than that, it's all like, I mean, R2 is getting spit out by a monster and, you know. Just, so you were missing the humor. I was missing the humor. That's exactly right. So I figured out a way to put humor in it, and I've been going to town. That's all fell into place. Well, if you look at all the shit that's out there, there's humor in it. Yeah, all the best, even the best action movies have. I mean, Die Hard's got a lot of humor in it. Lead the oh, weapon. dude, oh, yeah. every every Mission Impossible with Hank. I mean, with Tom Tom yeah. Cruise. It's and they bring in Simon Pegg. They bring the all the Fast and the Furious, the Bad Boy. It all has yeah. the humor in there with it. Yeah, that's what I was missing. I was like. Why didn't I see this before? I don't know why it is. You don't see the easiest, simplest things. Uh, because you already had it in your head for twenty years ago, and you're spitting out what you you what you were trying to get out. Just Square like you hole. never even ask. Yeah, you never even ask the whole deal with her eating. Paula points yeah. that out to you. Your kid. Yeah. Where did you? Where would you see that? I didn't. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And then we talk about it when me and you talk about it and we know who she is. Then we, you go, you know, I, we talk about a swimmer and you go, Oh crap. You know, she's half this and half this. I don't want to spoil it, but. And if you look back at the movies that we did, Wounded had some funny stuff in it. Yeah. With kills Kills and all that kind of stuff. Unchained didn't. Right. Uh, And there's, I have a couple moments between Rusty and Jesse that are fun that lighten it up, but that was good in there. Last stand had humor in it. A lot of it. Our our best projects always revolve around humor. LOD had a bunch of laughing when they were singing. I don't know <laughs> if it was meant to be funny. <laughs> no, actually, Uncle Charlie was funny. Yeah, you know? he was funny, and Jack Rochelle's about the sandwich. Yeah, was funny, like, but. That what I'm saying is the stuff that we put in there, even the even what we're about to shoot has humor in it. That's right. That's right. Has the humor that would be just like you said, slow down and the reaction of Chris, it's not dialogue of <gasps> Okay. And you know, I think when you shoot, you need to remember, don't forget to allow for those the, moments. Yeah. Don't forget to allow for let it happen. Yeah. And those are things I'm seeing now that I go, I might have to shorten the action because, and I'm not going to shorten the, I'll shoot it. But what I'm saying is I don't want to take away from that dialogue because the two gunshots, the kicking that, that stuff can be done quicker. So I got to be smart on that. And that's why I want to have a read through. So, all right, man, it's been a good show today. Yeah, it is. Probably I do these not at the butt crack of dawn all the time. Yeah, I think the uh, and for everybody here, we're we're doing this late Sunday night and not at six a.m. Probably better just to do it that way from now on. I think so too. Just because we're not just waking up and, and we have we a whole have, shitload of stuff. We, we, at we have stuff to remember and and not stuff that we have to do. So yeah, you like me, uh, I got a whole day worth of stuff to go do, and I'm thinking, oh, hey, shit, we're gonna dude. do this show. Yeah, so we'll upload it tomorrow. Yeah. But you guys share it. Uh, one more update. Uh, that Western I got, that Western I got to do in Phoenix is in going to be in eight theaters, and they want to take it nationwide. Why am I saying that about that is because we, me and you, mm-hmm. will talk next week. I now know the buyer of Harkins. I do. I now – I'm listening more, and as we develop and do more stuff with my buddies out in Phoenix, yeah. we can also bring that here because that's what we're looking to do, have different What's production the name teams. Of, what's the name of the Western? Royals Revenge. Go to the IMDb page up yet? Uh, I don't think so. 
I don't think it's done yet. Yeah. But just – Kellen Garner, it, Christopher Shep. Yeah, yeah Shep up. shot it. He did a really good job. But why I'm saying that is we're – It's got you listed in the credit. Yeah. I should be a stunt coordinator. Kansas City kid. That's who I am. (laughs) I got to fight and get beat up, and then I got to choreograph all the rest of the action and the fights. So I was super pumped about that, which is all like me and you talked about what we want to do. So as we are getting older, we're going to figure this out. Right. So it's going to be a bonus for us down the road. Well, I figured well, my, my master plan is to uh, – we'll do what we're doing. And then, meanwhile, I'll get this novel sale, and it's going to make a fortune. And oh, we'll dude. have a comic book. Then we'll line. be able to do whatever we want to do. Yeah, yeah. Then the movie Clothes comes line out. And clothesline and everything else. And I'll have <laughs> – Well, hurry up and get it. Don't wait till we're 70. <laughs> it goes big when you hit 70. I like got everything else. I'll never forget. Yeah. I'll, I'll end with this. Rush Limbaugh, if people ever listen to Rush Limbaugh, he, he said at one time on the show, I never forgot it. He said, there's nothing like getting old. He said, when you get old, that's when you have plenty of money, you can go do things, and you got to work as much. And I'm like, I always remember. Hey, I'm, I'm with it. Every, I'm liking it now because people go, well, you slow down when you get older. No, that's not true. You don't slow down. We haven't slowed down. We've just gotten smarter in the things we do. Yeah, there's the difference. And it gets a lot easier to say no to the junk. A lot so, easier to say no to the junk. I'm so, oh my! It's easy to say no to the junk. Easy. You don't have to worry about it. So All right. Well, I got this hairbrain idea. No, thank you. Nope, I don't want to do it. <laughs> if, it ain't, if it ain't messed, I don't want to do it. All right. Uh, see you at seven twenty. Seven twenty. All right, I'll be there. Peace. All right, bye.